one of the trends I want to bring to you all today that we, we mentioned. Here's another one. Uh, the idea of cloud, uh, computing in the cloud, kind of very buzzwordy to the future, <coughs> but it is uh, something I see happening. Uh, cloud computing is saving your stuff up onto the great servers in the sky. I think we do it with Flickr. I think we do it to some degree with Facebook, uh, with some of the other sharing sites. Using Google Apps is one way we might uh, save to the cloud, saving our Google Docs. Here's a personal example. Here I am working on my talk uh, using, and I'm not doing a commercial, I promise, using an application called Dropbox, which aligns with my Mac and I actually upgraded my service to 50 gigabytes of storage for $100 for a year. Anything I put in the Dropbox folder is behind the scenes, seamlessly synced to their server at Dropbox.com. So it goes up here and it sort of hangs out and it's backed up. But I can also align my Mac in Indiana, my, big, my iMac, my laptop, my desk computer at Dominican University, to sync to Dropbox as well. So right now, when I updated my presentation off and on throughout the day, mm -hmm. it's saved up to the cloud and then down to all of my men. And it does work on PCs as well. Looks like this on the web. I could actually, like if my Mac failed, we still could have got, uh, like with one of the other Macs in the room, we could have got to uh, my stuff and downloaded it. And the web version actually saves, goes back a few days, and saves change documents. So if I made a big giant error saving, I could go back to Dropbox and get this stuff back. Uh, I work on the iPhone. This is coming slowly. I think we'll see the converged devices hitting the cloud and hitting our documents and it becoming again that seamless laptop, desktop, phone, however you happen to get to it type thing uh, right there. So ways we can use the cloud. Understand that the devices are everywhere. This is another vote to not ban cell phone technology from your library. Uh, allow unfettered access via public computers to the cloud. And understand, this is really interesting, that the cloud may be a valuable information resource. I need photographs of Montreal. Where might I go? I might go to Flickr. And I might do a search, and I might click that little thing that gives me the most interesting ones first. And what I'm doing is tapping in to the cloud. And what everybody has stored up there of their photos tagged with Montreal for me to browse. So that's one way to sort of figure out where you want to go when you're visiting a new city. Uh, my friend Blake Carter actually put this on Twitter. Uh, more and more I'm finding answers to questions not from a search engine, but a search of my feed reader. And that spoke to me. I thought, yeah, that's what we mean when there's information to be found in the cloud. And God bless my friend Jenny. She read a, a post I did about the cloud, and she, she linked to it. She said, okay, all is well and good. Michael, you know, he's kind of right on with this, but I love it when Jenny says but, because she's brilliant. She said, make sure, if you're talking about the cloud in your libraries, to tell your users that there are multiple options. There are more than just Google more than just Dropbox. And we may actually be teaching our users how to synchronize, how to use a site like Dropbox, and what that means, and how to think about privacy. And I actually, in messing around with my Dropbox files, I found one little file I did not know was in there that had my social security number in it. And I took that out, resaved it, and it you know, fixed itself. But wow, I was like, yeah, you're right. You need it. Uh, and teaching about privacy and security is, is important. Sometimes you go over the top. Last week in Texas, uh, they put me to bed and breakfast. I realized I don't like bed and breakfast very much. Uh, I think I like hotels better. Uh, I plugged in my Mac, and I turned it on, and the Mac will show you other computers on the network. And there was Keith's computer. Oh, so I looked at Keith's computer, and I saw some folks' computers in here today. I didn't look at your stuff. But I opened Keith's computer. Keith turned out to be the owner of the B&B and was all the financial files for the business. Totally wide open on the network. So I walked down to the, the front desk and I said, is Keith here? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. Could you give him a message? Yeah, yeah. And I said, tell Keith his files are wide open on the network. So any chance we get to talk a little bit about security and privacy in those contexts uh, are very, very important. 
Uh, Jason Griffey in uh, Library Journal, a wonderful article called Stranger Than We Know, talked about the cloud librarians and said, our buildings are always going to be there. They're going to, they may change. They may be beautiful com uh, uh, community centers or meeting places. But we may also find that we're doing a lot of our work in the cloud, finding answers and talking to users. The library is the commons. Let's bring it back to sort of the physical space again. Uh, Dr. Carol Rose, in a wonderful article, uh, the, the, uh, the Tragedy of the Commons, no, the Comedy of the Commons, said the Commons is a place where each person adds more value. And I like, I like that definition a lot. Here's the Information Commons at Loyola University. They tapped into the fact that their students need creation tools, and they are circulating many digital video cameras. Georgia Tech's Computing Center in the Learning Commons, uh, loads of computers for the students to work on. And this is just one section. Here's the other one, and this is a more interesting. This, they call this Zone 3 at Georgia Tech, and they've done some experimental spaces as part of their commons. This is a space that can be anything. All of the furniture is on wheels, kind of hard to see, but everything can be moved around, okay? And these, you can actually make like a tent around your workspace, like you and five, six students, if you're working on your group presentation. You can make a tent, block sound as well, and sort of have your own space. And when you're done, it sort of becomes the next thing for the next group of people. It's a flexible space. It can be anything it needs to be for the students. Balance this out with a sign I saw in the Southern Library, Academic Library, do not move the furniture under any circumstance. <laughs> But you can also see the tag on the bottom of that one. It comes out and it says, do not remove what you're handling the bottom. Until sold by retail. But no one yes. can handle a yeah. compound sentence. Yeah. So yeah. They, they, you go into people's homes and they leave this. Oh, yeah. Because they're, they're afraid the, the tag police are going to come in. They'll get me if I So they're moving the tag out. So they leave it on the furniture. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Rule group. Ohio State University multimedia production stations in the library for creating whatever, podcast, video cast, whatever the students need to do. And in fact, very interesting to think about how we design our classrooms. Uh, there are laptops everywhere, and specifically, we notice on campus that there are more and more Macs every semester, which is really exciting for me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, and one thing I taught in a room a couple weeks ago, one thing we noticed, there weren't any outlets in the room. And I'm walking around teaching, and it was exactly like this. We, everybody was trying to get to the outlet, and somebody brought a surge protector, which you're everybody's friend if you do this, at a conference or a classroom. Uh, it's amazing how quickly things are moving. Oh, that's it. This is the coolest, that is the coolest thing in the world. Yes. It fits. And look at this. This is at the Oklahoma City Airport. Who knew? Who knew that you could? And I think we should do this in our libraries, in our classrooms, do the power thing, but do the USB power thing as well. Think of what you can charge here, your, your iPhone, your iPod. I never thought of that. The University of Toronto and Ryerson are putting in wireless electricity. Oh, I like so that. So the tabletops will automatically recharge your battery by just sitting the laptop on top of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So you don't have to plug in at all. Absolutely. I like that. All right. Uh, Brian Matthews wrote a bit about this in the ubiquitous librarian. And he said, he actually talked to the students beyond IT support. He said, what do you need? And they said, comfortable furniture, furniture we can move, lots and lots and lots of outlets. And this, uh, this reminded me of a, a wonderful post I found via Catherine Greenville in Australia. Seven ways to think outside the box about information literacy. But it really speaks to the information spaces we should be designing in libraries who pull in outside experts, involve students, and make the students feel at home. If you're going into public libraries, take this word out, put in users or clients or customers or patrons or whatever word you like. 